Revelation chapter 13 verses 15 through 18. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the beast should be killed. And he caused all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred threescore and six. The Roaring Twenties, the Age of Jazz and the Flapper, Art Deco and the casting off of social restraints. It was an age that redefined the traditional American family. A laissez-faire attitude drifted into American society and culture. It was an age that broke with solid Christian traditions. It was an age of amusement, fun and dance, as the nation cast off the horrors of World War I. A day of reckoning came, and the National Party ended. October 29th of 1929, also known as Black Tuesday, saw the financial markets of the United States of America collapse, causing the Great Depression. This economic collapse had devastating effects on American society and world affairs, because the Depression spread from American shores around the world. Unemployment rose to nearly 25% in the United States and to nearly 33% in other countries. Economic fears gripped the nation and the world, and again pre-millennial preachers grabbed on to the crisis. Prophecy writers viewed all efforts to solve the financial crisis as vain human effort that fulfilled Bible prophecy. The editorial from one Pentecostal journal during the 1932 presidential campaign summed up the fatalism of depression premillennialism. What can we do to arrest the downward current? Nothing. It's too late to patch up this old world. Our objective is to get men ready for the next. Prophecy Watchers did not like the New Deal initiated by President Franklin Roosevelt. They saw all efforts of the National Recovery Administration as being in league with the Antichrist and the Mark of the Beast. In November of 1936, the Social Security Administration issued a nine-digit number to over 25 million citizens. This event was a prophecy goldmine for dispensationalists because now they had a number that could be viewed as the mark of the beast described in Revelation chapter 13. Prior to 1986, people usually didn't receive a social security number until about the age of 14. All this would change with the Tax Reform Act 1986 that required parents to list social security numbers for each dependent child over the age of five for whom they wanted to claim as a tax deduction. This action caused a group of parents in 1988 to file a lawsuit in federal court claiming that the federal government violated their freedom of religion because the law was a precursor to the mark of the beast. Dispensationalists saw 666 and the mark of the beast in every financial modification that society and technology brought forth. Checking accounts, credit cards, debit cards, and the universal product code system all are seen as part of the evil financial institution being pushed by the Antichrist. 
millennium fever drove people to refuse the issuance of social security numbers. But their refusal is having dire consequences today because it is exceedingly difficult to maintain employment without the number. People also refuse the usage of credit and debit cards, believing that using these cards would only strengthen the world financial system and the mark of the beast. Fear is a powerful motivator. Nearly all of the prevailing apocalyptic theories have fearful undercurrents. Throughout history, kings and dictators, popes and pastors have used apocalyptic fear to manipulate the masses. One thing we must understand is that fear is not faith. Simply stated, Millennium fever is fear. Fear of the future, fear of the unknown. As long as fear is the undercurrent in our view of the future, we can be manipulated with apocalyptic fear-mongering. Premillennialism should not have an undercurrent of fear. It should see the coming of Jesus through the glasses of hope and faith. The aloofness and fear of early dispensationalist teachers caused the conservative element of Christian fundamentalism to withdraw from nearly all forms of social activism and politics. For nearly 50 years, evangelicalism and fundamentalism would not be involved in the governmental process of our country. Don't blame secular liberalism for the decay seen in our government. Blame the church, because we allowed our government to decay in the first place through our lack of involvement. We lost our political voice to millennium fever. The world is changing again. The world economic crisis of the latter part of the first decade of the 21st century has stirred up all sorts of apocalyptic fear. People losing their homes and jobs to changing economic conditions should not be interpreted as a sign of the end times. How do you think our brothers and sisters in Christ felt during the dark days of the Great Depression of the 1930s? Just because times are tough does not mean the eastern sky will split with the second coming of Jesus. Stop and consider this one question. Do you view your future with more fear than faith? How you honestly answer this question will help you see clearly the path that lies ahead.